party people. I am ready to jetty. Who is here? Who is going to be hanging out with me today? I am super excited to get the ball rolling. Let me stay over here. Make sure I have smart school hooked up. All right. There's a weird delay, but I'm diving in anyways, because when you watch the replay and there's that awkward silence, that's just annoying. Yes, I got my first hello. Hi, Margo Brush is in the house. Look at this happy person. If you guys don't know Margo, you must know her. She lives right up the street from me. She's the biggest sweetheart, and she helps me every single day um, with awesome art school students. And I'm so glad you're here, Margo, and officially, you know, here. <laughs> Can you feel my love? And it was her birthday this weekend. So happy birthday, Margo. Hello, hello. Wendy is here. Jamie, yay. I, Jamie, I just saw you were trying to get in. Did you get in okay? I saw your post just now and I was like, oh shoot, hi. I'm loving all the highs. Look at Katie gave me an identical high. The screamy highs, I'm all about it. I'm all about, look at these exclamation points. These are girls after my own heart. I can't write a single word without 59 exclamation points. I love it. Love it. Oh, Tammy's chiming in from British Columbia. Yeah, guys, let me know when you're where you where you're coming from. Windy, Ohio. Oh, that's so nice. I got your Casper. I got your note. Oh, thank you so much. That's super sweet of you, Casper. I love, love, love. <laughs> I love these comments. We got covered in glue. This one's cracking me up, but you comments are moving so fast. I can't get you. Ah, I got it. Yeah, I love it. Covered in glue. That's the best. Yes, that means you're doing it correctly. Yes, yes, yes. Yay. Oh, sorry, Sherry, that it's a terrible time. I know. I think what I'm going to do actually towards day like five and six, I'm going to come on really early in the morning so I can um, hang out with my Australian students. I have tons and I never get to see them live and it makes me so makes me feel really bad. So um, I definitely am going to plan plan to do that. Um, I think on Friday. Yeah, it's a great way to wake up and go live super early. Simone is still working on your collage. Misty, you're so sweet. Thank you so much. Donna's here chiming in from England. <clears throat> yay. Oh, yay. And Jeanette is in the house. I'm highlighting my helpers so you guys know that who you can reach out to if you have questions. So first was Margot. This is Jeanette. It's this way. Jeanette is here as well. Um, they are all my amazing assistants. And Tara Salento, I'm sure, is lurking around here somewhere. And if she's not here right away, she'll definitely be in and out all week long, too. So you guys, um, if you guys do have questions, you guys can feel free to message these lovely ladies and they'd be happy to help you. Yay! <clears throat> Tara's here. Tara, is this you? Do you need to re-register? If you guys um, are commenting and you see your name come up as Facebook user, you can just, there's in the post, like literally right above my head, it's like, if you want to grant StreamYard permission to see your name, you just like put your name in a field and that's all you need to do. And don't worry about it if you don't feel like it. It's totally optional. Um, oh, good. Kathleen is in California, just starting her collage. It's 9 a.m. I, oh, that's so nice. Someone was going to start later, but she was dying to see me live. Well, I'm so glad you guys are here. There is nothing worse than having a big party and having no one show up for it. So it means everything that you guys um, are here and hanging out with me at really in real time. It is so much fun. And that is the reason that these weeks of parties are so fun is that like, you get this big creative like momentum. And for a lot of people who have been maybe creatively stuck or have been overwhelmed and didn't know really where to start, or I don't know, it was just in a funk. Like 2021 is still a super wonky year, just like, um, just like 2021 isn't any better. And, but art is like, such a great escape, always, always, always. And I am just so grateful that I have such a interactive, engaging, and super sweet community that I get to do lessons for all the time because it saves my life every single freaking day. So yes, yeah, thank you for sh coming to my party, Annie. That's awesome, awesome. So yeah, so the first, 
Oh, good. Simone says she just moved in her. Our supplies are one thing I unpacked first. Amen, sister. Oh, Dee's chiming in from Liberty, North Carolina. Is that near Apex? I don't know where that is. I'm in North Carolina as well. It's a beautiful day out here. Um, so exciting. So, Monica, I was going to say, let's get to the housekeeping first. You can post your collage anywhere in the Facebook group. So I'm also streaming this to my Facebook page, but all the giveaways and all the prizes get chosen from the Facebook group. So if you're chiming in for my Facebook page and you haven't joined my group yet, go search Awesome Art School, the group, and you should get your buns in here and come play along with us. Um, so today is just, it's like a little, it's like a, we're like having a welcome. It's, we're having a welcome today. We're not, um, we're, there's a lot of people that haven't gotten to the lesson yet, and that's super fine. So I'm just going to go over how things are going to work for the whole week. It's very simple and straightforward, but just to make sure there's no confusion, and then I'm going to take your questions, and I'm absolutely giving away two prizes today because not a day goes by of these workshops that I don't bestow some art magic on a few people just because I want to. Um, so yes, yes, yes. Oh, Kimberly, thank you for the compliment. That is so nice. Debbie's in the house. Debbie Luden, just so you know, who's next to me? No, oh, my little fairy friend is right here. Um, <laughs> oh, got so many Friendly faces, Vicky is here. Awesome, awesome, awesome. You guys are the best. I really, oh, Las Vegas. Who's from Vegas? Vegas and Scotland are my two happy places. <laughs> Isn't that weird? They're like opposite from one another as well, in every single way. I love them both. Um, yay, Debbie says, yay, I know. You're you're Amy Brown. Um, if you got whoever is like new to my world, I am I'm fairy and fantasy obsessed. And so uh, one of my students, Debbie, sent this to me, and I it's, I just love it. Um, it's so, so fun. And if Linda Levin is here, I also bought – she, like, sent me a link. She, like, showed a picture of this on the last time I was live. I was live, and, of course, I had to, like, immediately buy it, and it was so cool. This book is so cool. All my Celtic Collective people – you guys would love this. I'm going to put it on our one Scott, one not book list. Oh, look at my arm flab rocking right there. That's not a good look for anyone. Don't remind me not to extend my arms ever. <laughs> oh, that's Don't do that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's get on with our housekeeping. All right. So we said our hellos. Today is day one of day six of the art deco mixed media portrait workshop where we are going to be creating a face on, I'm using an old record cover, you can use whatever you want, right? Our substrate. And we are slowly going through all of the layers of our hot dog on days one through four. So it's very straightforward. Okay, so everyone's today's jobs gets one and two this is what we're doing just today we're doing a couple of steps every day and no more so no one gets overwhelmed or overloaded slow by slow it doesn't even make sense step by step <laughs> until we're all done all right so today um at eight o'clock a.m my time which is eastern time i released the first two it's the first day, but it was two lessons. We picked out our substrates and then we did the collage, which is the bun. So the collage, the bun holds the whole painting together, right? Just like it holds your hot dog and all the messy toppings. That's what our, that's what our bun is. And the collage really sets the stage for all the paints and all the other things that we're going to put on top. So hopefully the metaphor makes sense up until this point. It's not rocket science. Um, and hopefully that'll be easy to remember the next time you do your own project. So yes, to log in. So in that email that you're sent, so make sure you check your emails every day and make sure you add Karen at Awesome Art School to your contacts list so you're not missing out on these emails because in the emails, you can literally click on the button. It will take you right to the day's lessons. If you also, there's a button to take you right to the live, this live right here. Every day you'll have a <clears throat> these are all scheduled ahead of time. So I have links. So you can click on the links and you can show up for the live. I also have the lives and the links to the classrooms in the classroom for you. So I'm trying to put these links all over so they're easy for you guys to go to go find. 
I'm also recording all of these and then they're getting uploaded to YouTube and I'm putting all the recordings also in the classroom. So I'm trying to make this super easy for everybody to participate. I know we have people from all around the world, all different time zones. So hopefully between the replays and I will stagger the last few days of live so I can get hang out with more time zone people. <laughs> um, and hopefully between the mix, we'll all, we'll all figure it out. But today's day one, relax. I'm not choosing giveaway winners from today's lesson until tomorrow. So everybody has 28 hours to finish their collage and get it posted. In terms of posting, you can post it anywhere in the Facebook group. We used to, I used to post one and then put it in the announcement sections and then everybody would post there. It, it was way too difficult for way too many people. So this time around, you can just post it anywhere. I'm going to have my kids scroll through randomly. They know what to look for each day and I have them choose. So it's not biased or anything. It's nice and random who the winners are. It's just participation. <laughs> Ah, uh, <laughs> Linda, I see Linda's here talking about my, did you see my book, Linda? Look what you made me get. I love it. I love it so much. The illustrations are so cool. And what, what a creative, what a super creative book. Um, okay. Does anyone have any questions up until this point? And while I'm waiting for that delay to sync up with that question, <laughs> I'm going to just give you a verbal overview of how to log in in case anybody's like, I don't know how to get back. What you want to do is you want to X out of all your open browsers, go to a new window and type awesomeartschool.com. Okay, that's the home page. Now, some devices will keep you logged in. So if you're already logged in, you won't see the word login anywhere. You'll just see some words at the top of your screen. And all you do is click where it says just my courses. You just click that and that will show you the workshop. Okay. And you can click and you can begin. Does that sound good? That should be pretty self-explanatory. If you're not logged in, you'll see the word login up at the top. And then you need to click that first, enter your email and your password. And then you click just my courses and you'll see the workshop there. <laughs> Michelle says, Karen, you're not helping my book, my book addiction. Girlfriend, it is not even funny the number of books that I have bought in the last like six months. It is like my, um, it's like an obsession. What's the minimum size plate? You can work any size you want to. It is your project. I like cannot work small to save my life. I just can't do it. Can't do it. Nothing. No, I just can't. So I always work ginormous. In fact, this album cover, which is 14 by 14 square, is about the smallest I can work. Um, so, ah. so even when I draw, I draw huge too. So this is 14 by 14, which is also nice because you can buy standard frames for these record covers too. But um. There's no minimum size, whatever you're feel, feel comfortable with. I do know that a lot of beginner artists like to work small, but I actually recommend working bigger. It's so much easier, especially when you're drawing. You just like, need a little like real estate to spread out on. <laughs> oh, yes. Sherry says, good thing you're not addicted to coloring oils, too. I know. Don't get me started. It's on my wish list. Um... I'm just going to, all right, good. I got some questions coming in. I'm happy to answer them. I know matte pages are preferred for collage. I want to use as a little part of a slick mag page. Um, it will, matte medium will, you can definitely use magazines. However, they're the biggest pain in the ass to work with of all your collage options because they get um, super wrinkly. They're like, they become like wrinkles that you can't like get out no matter what you do. So I, I don't like working with magazines. And when you're doing a beautiful face, you don't want like bumpy, bumpy things under it. Like, like, um, you know, like the texture is 
already super textured when it's just very, very, very flat collage. So if you have, um, just from experience, when you do magazines, it's just something about the whatever the heck they're made out of. They get really, really wrinkly. So just FYI, if maybe if you want to put them around the borders, that's fine. But I just think you're going to regret it if you put any under where her face is going to be. It's a great question. Um... <laughs> oh, Patricia's using a nine by seven. Yeah. I mean, just do whatever you, whatever you want. So I know people, so there's some people who it's terrifying to work large. I don't want anyone to be terrified. You just do you, you do whatever size floats your boat. But by the time you do have a border around it, you are getting smaller and smaller. I'm just saying. Um, all right. I have some little edges on my collage. Should they be covered with more paper? Oh, that's a good question. They will be covered with, um, they can be covered with paint for sure. So we're going to do, this is, so so today we did the plate. We did the whole collage to, to completion. Tomorrow we're going to just do the drawing portion. And then Wednesday is when we paint. So <clears throat> I, this is just one coat of, acrylics and it's sponge painted on with just like a little nasty CC sponge I had kicking around. Nothing fancy. So if you have little pieces on the edge that are exposed, you can absolutely just paint them in for sure, for sure. And just FYI, because it's only Monday, I do her hair. It takes literally 10 seconds and I'm using a fan brush, a large fan brush. So if anybody wants to try that and they don't yet have a fan brush, I just want to let you know in case you haven't combed through the um, supplies area really closely, fan brush, and I've never tried it before, and it's literally like 10 seconds. It's magical. Um, and then if you want to get one ahead of time and you can practice on some scrap paper, a whole bunch before Wednesday, so you can go in with a little bit more confidence, highly recommend. It was an experiment. I kind of just don't, I have no fear. So I just try different shit and that worked great. So I can't wait for you guys um, to try it too. It was really, really cool. So I would definitely recommend trying it if you want to especially if you want to do any more mixed media projects in the future you have that handy dandy fan brush you can do the hair all day long it'll take you like a split second and by the way if you're not familiar with my way of doing art the faster the quicker the better <laughs> i don't like to dilly dally i like to get right to the good stuff um oh we have some good tips. Use good lighting. Well, that's good. <laughs> Sherry's going to pee from laughing. All right. Well, I won't tell if that happens. Your secret is safe with me, sister. Um, how large is large? I just like to work large. Like, I do drawings. <laughs> like, I just like big. Like, these are 11 by 14. I just like a big old piece of paper. Um... You know, I just like big, big painty things. So uh, that's just me. But a lot of people don't. That That's just too much. Ah, too much. And they, they don't feel comfortable. I would say like a 10 by 10 would be probably a good in-between size. But if you, but remember too, if you're, um, if you're afraid of th that much real estate, all you can do to make your surface smaller is just come in more with the background edging, right? So, um, and you can always go back and add more later. Like if your face ends up being this tiny and you have all this empty space, you can just sponge in some more background red or whatever color you want to do. And by the way, feel free to use whatever colors you guys like for all of this. Um, let me just make sure I didn't, um, <clears throat> is it better to use neutrals under the face or does it matter? Well, we'll get there on Wednesday. I just do gesso first and then I just, we're only doing, uh, one or two coats of a skin color. That's all we're doing for painting. The painting portion is super simple. It's very straightforward. I know this project looks super fancy and that's what makes it so exciting is because getting to the fancy part is extremely doable and very easy once you sh I show you what to do. Um, so 
You just need a flat old coat of paint on there, any skin color you like. And if you don't have gesso, that's okay. You just need to probably do two or three coats of your skin color instead of one or two. I hope that if that, and feel free to ask follow-up questions if I'm not answering your question to your satisfaction. Um, what I learned this morning, finger smooth as you go. Amen. I don't stop molesting my collage pieces until I am 100% done. Uh, Mary Jessie loves fan brushes. Then you're going to love this hair. Let me tell you. I was so pleased. It was like, I was a little sad. It was over so fast. <laughs> um... Well, Linda, I don't understand your comment. Don't take your Lasix. Oh, right before you start to, to color. Oh my God, you are so funny. How large of a fan brush? Um, the, um I think the one I used is. That's a good question. Um, um, you know what, Rebecca? Oh, and Rebecca, was that you? who was asking me about those markers. Hold on, I have so many notes. I had two people ask me the same question and I wrote down your name so I wouldn't forget and now I can't find where I put it. Oh man, oh. Oh, it is. Oh, Rebecca Lawrence, that is you. Yes, I have your, I wrote down your name. Um, Cause you had, you're the one that emailed me along with, uh, Devonna Jackson, both of you are the ones that emailed me about the pit pen alternatives. I don't know if you saw my live the other day, but those markers will work. Um, and large fan brush, I think I used the, two, I want to say the two inch, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um, so I will go find out that exact and I will let you know. Jennifer, Rebecca Lawrence. Always the good questions. Girlfriend, I got you. Size, fan brush. And actually, you know what I'll do? Exact size of the fan brush. Um, I will put it specifically in the classroom. I did go on Amazon and I found one comparable to me. So I think the one that I have in there, I mean, I wouldn't pick one that wasn't going to be comparable. Um, so check out the classroom that's for the supplies as it is, because I tried to be super thorough about what I was using and then alternatives for those that couldn't get it. But I will double check for sure. And if it's really different, I will definitely put it in there. Um, Annette asks, I'm using collage folder. So just gesso acrylic painted on and sanded how many coats? Um, you, I would just follow right along with me. I would do the collage today and that's it and get ready for drawing and then Wednesday. So yeah, you don't have to do any uh, gesso or acrylic yet. Just follow right with me, I got you. Uh, this is recorded and it's still going on so you haven't missed a thing. And yes, I'm putting all the replays I upload to YouTube and I put them in the classroom for you so you will can use any of those. Um, all right, we got a, love, a lot of people loving fan brushes. That's great. I'm not sure of the size. I want to say mine is two inches. It's a pretty big one. Um, oh, I meant color in the collage part or will be covered enough by gesso. Um, it were, the only place I use gesso is her face. I don't use gesso anywhere else. Nothing else is gessoed at all. Just her face. Just to, just to get rid of the... Um, the text and then to put the paint on top. That's it. Oh, <laughs> Linda said Lasix makes you go pee, so don't take it for collage because you have to be like, because you can't stop because you have to be mooshing with your finger the whole time. <sighs> yeah, there is a link to the fan brush is already in the classroom. All of the pictures of supplies in the classroom are clickable links. You can just click on any of the photos of the supplies. Like if you go past all the PDFs, you go past all of the graphics under them. That's all, those are all click clickable. If you click them, those are the ones that I, to write to the ones that I am using. Um, Oh, da, 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 small fan brush. I think the small fan brush is fine. Um, 
because it's like you have those little finger waves, which were all the rage back in the 20s. So you can, I think a small one would be great as well. Um, I don't think you can go wrong, but you can, I would definitely just play on a piece of paper. That's what I did. You can, I, I don't edit out anything when I'm trying things. Like I don't wait till it's perfect. I always just post everything. So you'll see me wiggle it out on a little piece of paper onto the side. I'm like, Oh, that works great. And then I do it right on the thing. So you take yours and try it ahead of time. And if you want to try a bigger one, then you should hope maybe hopefully you have time to grab one. Um, yeah, easy hair. I'm all about easy hair. Um, 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 oh, said there's, yeah, Goodwill doesn't, isn't really my go to for older books. They have like current books. Um, but I like to buy books <laughs> that I don't like and then I rip them up and then I don't feel bad. <laughs> it's, a little, it's a little barbaric, but, but it works. Um, can we gesso and then draw her? You, Linda, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> I can't tell you no, but like, no, that's not what I'm doing. So if you want to do your own thing, go for it for sure. Um, you have our, it's super thick. Can I thin it? You know what? Um, you can, or you can just skip it and just do more coats of, paint if you want that's fine too um just it was just like primer you know like say i had a red wall and i wanted to make it like a light blue wall like you can prime it first and then do two coats of light blue or you can just do three coats of light blue do you know what i'm saying so you can always if you're not in love with your gesso you can skip it and just do one more coat of the paint i think that's totally fine um hello australia let's see where can I find the classroom? Go to awesomeartschool.com, log in, and then click just my courses at the top. If you have signed up, that's the simplest way to get there. Um, so Simone says, I never know when to stop. I overthink it and then in too much. Well, follow me throughout the week and that won't happen okay so follow the leader i will not let you overwork your piece just do what i do i will i promise that i will get you there um on painting gray hair yeah just use gray paint done easy peasy yeah don't overthink the hair the hair is like one and done so if i this is all I did was I wiped, I dunked my brush into brown and then black, and then I squiggled it on her face. <laughs> so if you want gray hair, do like gray and and black. Just dunk your brush into two pants, paints, and then when you go to squiggle it on, they all blend right on your canvas for you. Done. So nothing fancy. Keep it super simple. Or you could do white with gray if you wanted to look, you know, do whatever, you know, squirt out on your palette the, the color of hair that you want and apply. <laughs> that's, that's my biggest advice. <laughs> to it, super simple. Um, oh, Sandra's working on her, her 100 faces yesterday. Awesome, awesome. Well, you'll be in good practice for the face drawing, which is tomorrow. Um, uh, oh, just making sure I have all your comments. Oh, good. Eileen is loving the gelatos. Yeah, they're super, they're, they're super fun. Oh, my God, this is so funny. I didn't have time to blow time my collage. Now I didn't even have bug has become part of my art. That's hilarious. I love it. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is good. <clears throat> the hardcovers from Falling Apart Old Books. Yes. Yes, they are excellent. Absolutely. I just rescued a gigantic old book. And actually, I just, um, this is a hardcover book. I made a spell book for my Celtic Collective members. And um, and it makes these make great art, art journals as well. I love me some upcycling. Um. 
<laughs> I love this. Hey, I'm an author. Rip books to shreds. Use them. Create with them. Amen. I know. I love it, too. Although I get some heat on my YouTube channels when I teach people how to make altered books. Oh, people are, like, horrified. And I'm like, it's a little ridiculous to think that every single book in the whole world is going to just be in perfect condition and read by humans to eternity. Like, at some point, books get thrown away or overused or whatever. I think of creating you know, art on these old vinyl record covers and turning them into art journals, like it gives them a whole nother life that they can like live on for another hundred years and they would have absolutely become trash. So I don't feel bad at all, but oof, I got some nasty comments about that, which I think is fascinating. Um, what colors for blonde hair? I, mm, that's a good question, actually. There, um, I would recommend... I wish I was in my studio right, right now. Like yellow ochre is good for, for blonde hair rather than doing, oh, you can do like full on yellow. Like I have some very graphic yellow haired blonde and it looks super cool. Um, but yellow ochre is nice mixed with some like raw umber, which is like a lighter brown mixed with some like the earthy yellows to me, if you want it more realistic or what I would go for. I wouldn't use like a cadmium yellow. I would use like a yellow ochre or like a Naples yellow, something that has like, uh, it's muted down a little bit. Or I would take yellow and like mix it with a brown. Um, that's a great question. Um, is it fixable if we make a mistake? No, you're not gonna make a mistake. You're just gonna go with it. You just, if you, I make mistakes on 100% of every art project I have ever made or taught. You can ask all my students that are playing along with me. They will tell you, I make, I mess up all the time. You just run with it. You literally don't skip a beat. Just be like, oh shit, that just happened. Okay, now what, now what do we do? Now it's a blah, blah, blah. And in fact, I do it. I actually did it on her hair. Like this was way up in the sky. And I was like, oh, mm. like there's nothing I can do, but there's nothing to do. You just make it happen. You just make it work. You work it out. You, you just keep going. <laughs> there's literally nothing to worry about. So nope, you just go for it and you don't worry about it. And you just make the best of it. That is my, that is how I deal with every mistake, which, and they, and I think it's much easier if you just know going in, it's going to happen. Like you, you, it just happens and that's fine, but it's easier if you know it's coming. Just like the ugly phase, the ugly phase is also guaranteed. I have never done a project that didn't have a blatant, full on nasty ass ugly phase. You simply ignore it or you're like, hey ugly face oh my god she was right this is the ugliest face ever now let's move on because the only way to get over and through an ugly face is to do not stop you cannot stop if you stop the ugly face is gonna win and you can't let them win okay so you have to keep going you just acknowledge it you're like you have a great laugh because you're like oh my god is this really and then you don't even you don't even think the thought you don't have the thoughts that say like, what if I can't pull this out? Like, oh my God, you don't even go there. You're like, oh my God, this is hilarious. Karen was right. This is the ugliest space I've ever seen. You say hello, and then you keep going. Keeping going is the only way to bust through that ugly phase. That's it. That's your only choice. You have to do it, okay? But you can do it, I promise. Um, Don't get me started on the ugly phase. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. You're getting some great adv advice as well. You're like, happy accidents. It's so true. That's why I have a card cut out, cut out of Bob Ross because his attitude towards everything is like, yeah, he just knew what was going on. He was absolutely right. Um, oh, I love that too. I totally agree. It is, it does add, it is honoring them at their best. I totally, totally agree. Um, I love that. I make a mistake in every single pace I make. Me too. Me too. 100. Um, all right. Awesome. Okay. Um, oh, that sounds amazing. An old Hebrew dictionary. That, that sounds beautiful. It just sounds be beautiful. And you haven't even done it. That sounds amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Oh, I netted eyes last night. All right, so cool. Oh, 
Okay, you glued and glued and glued. Okay, are you also mashing them with your fingers the whole time? You have to molest your collage the whole time. It's, it's the only way I can think to say it. Like, you're like, you got to get in there. You got to get in there with your fingers and get, and you're literally like with a force of your fingers and the wetness of the glue permeating through through all those papers until it adheres plus yeah under and over you could also go back i've done before if we still have it i've actually gone back with more after it's dried to try to work in more glue as well <clears throat> would a brayer work as well i don't i don't think a brayer works as well um because you can't feel under the brayer where the air bubbles are that's why I don't prefer a brayer. You can start, there's nothing wrong with using, I use brayers a lot for my gesso because it gives it like a cool edgy look. But like for me, it's such a tactile experience because you can feel those wrinkles and you can feel the bubbles. So you you're specifically mashing down where you feel that. And if you have a brayer there, you can't feel anything because all you feel is the brayer. Do you know what I mean? You don't really have any idea what's going on under there, but you can try it. Absolutely. You can roll that thing all day long. Um, but I just feel like, how are you going to know it's there until you feel it out and then, and then go. Yes. Yeah. And I, and the only thing, yeah. And see, I don't use, I don't generally use credit cards on my collage layer because a lot of times, because I'm working with so many vintage paper, it just rips and I don't want anything to rip. So again, your fingers are so much gentler and they're not, you don't have any of the coarse edges that a credit card does. So I just like, I just massage it with my fingers because then you can, <laughs> I literally am like picturing myself massaging, but you can really feel every single bump and bump and you can work them out very specifically because you can feel them. Yes, you can read all of the, the replays are going to be in the classroom. And I'm also having a link to the replays in the emails that you get every single day. So yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, you can. Yeah. Yep. That can definitely happen too. Uh, it just depends on the ink that your um, whatever was printed on for sure. <clears throat> Um, all right, Julie, I'm bringing up your comments. <laughs> uh, I'm laughing at someone else's comment, not yours. All right. Instead of the background writing piece, is there a different alternative? I'm sitting here with a broken foot after surgery, I can't go to the store. I'm in love with polka dots. Oh, absolutely. Yes, for sure. Yeah. You can use whatever you want. I mean, I use napkin. If you watch my very first lesson, I actually bring out I think it's the first, it's, there's two video, there's two sections for today. And one of them, I actually bring out like a tub of my favorite things to collage with any of those things. You can use wrapping paper, napkins, just you have to separate the ply if you use napkins uh, and they tear easily. Again, use your fingers, um, but anything paper, absolutely. And yes, you can handwrite anything. You just have to be careful of your ink because if you use the wrong pen, you, you might be using like a, like a felt tip pen. Is actually water soluble, so that would be bad later on. Like these pens, you couldn't do because they um, don't know why I have those pens there, <laughs> but they'll bleed. So just make sure you're using like a permanent archival ink. You can stamp on tissues, tissue paper, not tissues, but like tissue paper. Um, so watch that. Um, watch the lessons for today, and I give you lots of ideas. Um, I have smooshed it. Can I blame the glue? I'm using matte Mod Podge for the first time. Um, I know I don't, I don't usually collage with matte Mod Podge. Um, I usually, um, I'm rubbing air bubbles in that weren't there. I don't know. I've not had trouble with it. I'm not sure. I'm so sorry. I would just keep working on it or just let it dry like maybe dry it all the way. It should not be sticky at all once it's dried. For sure. Um, yeah, I think polka dot, I know Jeanette says, I think polka dots would look really good. I agree. I think polka dots would look awesome. And you can hand draw them um, or not. <laughs> you guys are so funny. Um, this is a great question. Use the back of a watercolor pad. Any advice? 
Yes, um, I would paint the other side. I would paint the other side. Or you can either coat it in a matte mod podge or like a paint. It's just because it's wet on one side. So you want to like do the same process on the other side to balance it out. Can you stamp the white layers of the napkin also? I don't see why not, but the white layers of the napkin sometimes are so brittle. Um, just be careful gluing. They're very fragile, but yes, use all, all the things. Use all the pieces for sure. Um, yes, you can totally use craft paper. Yeah, I use scrap paper all the time. All the time, absolutely. Yes. Uh, I just finished my collage and it's quite bold colors. Can I tone it but down with gesso? Absolutely. Yep, yep, yep. You sure? Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, guys, these are your projects, so you can absolutely do whatever you love to do. And yes, and then I would do one side at a time. I would too. Yes. Can you put a pinhole and help release the air and it will not release? Yeah, you can do the pinhole thing. Also, though, I think um, I just warn against getting too, too fussy. Um, I find that some people get really fussy, but then when I see it in real person, I'm like, oh, you're fine. It's not that big a deal. So don't go overboard. Sometimes like there's just pockets and they're so small, but really once you put all your other layers on there and all the things go, like you would never notice it and it wouldn't impact anything in any way. So just make sure you're not getting overly fussy about it because it is just the background. Um, I don't know how bad your bubbles are, but my guess is they're not as bad as you think they are. But yes, you can do a little slit and let the air out. You can even you can even do a larger slit and mash more glue under there as well. Um, so yeah, oh, paper doilies is a great idea. All right. Oh, good, good discussion, ladies. Good, good, good. Um, all right, so we went over a catalog in. We talked about the fact that for the giveaways, you have until tomorrow noon to post your collages, and I will pick from those for tomorrow's giveaway. I have already picked two people for today's giveaway as well. Yeah, yeah, don't, yeah, don't be overly fussy. Don't be overly fussy. It's all good. It's just your background. It's just, it, no one is going to even be looking at your background when that gorgeous face is on there anyways. Yes. This is all the replays are posted. All the replays are posted. Oh, thank you, Linda, for the reminder. Oh my God, I almost forgot. Yes. Yes, there is a hashtag. And it is Art Deco Divas is what we are writing. Oh my God, Linda, thank you so much for saying that. There's also, I have an Instagram page just for Awesome Art School where all the only thing posted on that Instagram is student work. That's the only thing that gets posted there. So in the classroom, in all the classroom lessons, you'll see the email. If you want your work to be um, featured on the Awesome Art School Instagram page, you can um, just email us insta for awesomeartschool at gmail.com. But all the information is there and it has this hashtag in it too. But thank you for reminding me. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, um, okay. Oh, sorry. Just reading comments. Yes. Oh, I'm so glad you guys said that. Oh my gosh. I totally forgot. I'm writing that a big note for myself. So I won't forget in, in the following days. Hashtag. And Jeanette and Tara and whoever else is Margo. If you guys want <laughs> to period periodically put that in the comment section, that would be amazing. All right. Deco Divas. I'm so excited. All right, so fun. Yeah, and then and then if you want to post on Instagram on your regular on your regular Instagrams, we can all track each other there. It's really, really fun. Although the winners will be chosen from the Facebook page. Um, any information on your monthly membership? How does that work? <clears throat> so in the um, well, the easiest way is just to go to awesomeartschool.com and you can actually read. Um, you can read about all of them. Um, in terms of the, thank you, Jeanette, in terms of the mixed media society, which is like where we do these kind of projects all the time, I actually put a little, there's a little information in the classroom for you. I also totally forgot about that, um, about the mixed media society specifically, but you can also, and doors are open, um, now until 
Sunday. Um, and that's for all of the, for all the clubs. Um, I just want to purchase your artwork. You know, I actually don't sell my artwork. I don't because I'm too busy making lessons for all my art clubs. Deco Divas, says Annette, I know. So there is in the classroom, uh, I think it's between the supply information and the lessons. There's just a little bar that said information on the Mixed Media Society and you can read about there. But it is my, I have three art clubs because I am obsessed with mixed media and drawing and also all things fantasy and fairy. So my those are my three art clubs. Um, and so I can focus, laser focus on all of those three things. And then I get to do all of my favorite things with all of your favorite things. And it's like the best thing ever. But awesomeartschool.com is where you can go and learn more and sign up. I have some winners here for today. And um, the reason I chose, this is the only day where I'm doing it based on something like specific. Otherwise, this will just be random participation. Um, these two I chose, uh, Susan Handsome and Karen Funchion. Funchion. I'm going to try to not sound like an idiot. I chose these today out of the ones that were posted because I thought they were the most unusual or the most like peculiar or AKA creative backgrounds that I saw. Susan is using the inside of a Jiffy Riggy bag mailer with an old boutique bag torn up on top. She let this dry overnight. The plate was unfinished cardboard and really soaked up the matte medium. What fun. So like, I've never heard of that before. So Susan, you are getting the, um, this giant pack of gel crayons. These are a great alternative to gelatos and are used in exactly the same way. It's brand new. I think I made one scribble with the skin tone to test it out. And it has one, two, three, four, four skin tone. Well, actually, I would say five. So it has lots of good skin tones in there. So Susan, if you are here, please email me at karen at awesomeartschool.com. Or you can just reply back to any emails that I'm sending you. You just hit reply and let me know that you are the winner. But I am writing you down for the gel crayons. Oh, I love all the congratulations. They're so nice. Oh, I'm going to, I got to, I don't want to lose that question. Hold on. Before I do the next winner, what they get, let me just answer this question. Using a 9 by 11 photo mailer, I plan to use it as a place to keep keepsakes, photos, and mementos. Cute. I heard you mention painting the other side of water, uh, watercolor paper. Um, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, you can for sure. I would probably, I would probably, if I was doing a photo, I actually have decorated a whole mailer before and I just treated the back side the same as the front side. So it kind of wrapped around the whole thing. So yeah, I totally would. Okay. And then Karen Bunchion, just going to pretend I'm saying that right. Um, this is a medium dest uh, density overlay board. And it's a hand-painted Art Deco design on newspaper print paper. I'm not even sure what that is, but it looks super cool. And I stopped me in my tracks. It looks like a lot of work. It's almost like little hand, like little Zentangle all Art Deco motifs in every single one of these little squares. And I thought, she needs an award for that. <laughs> That's she probably worked more on that than I did my whole project. So it would be, it would be my honor to um, I'm going to be gifting her um, this sketches on toned paper sketchbook. And this is filled with um, little floral motifs in here. And um, I also have a, I actually have a free series on YouTube that I will mail along with this which has a lessons on it's a three-part lesson on how to draw and create on tone paper so it's a little it's a little more than just a, a, a book it's a book and a lesson as well so um good job ladies i'm just gonna write that down so i don't forget what i did 
And those were just chosen um, from now on. Everything will just be, it'll just be random picks by my family members. Oh, Deb Dalton's in the house. What is going on, my friend? Um, I know where are my fur babies? Oh, there's Maggie's right here. She's just behind my pile of crap. See, Maggie, Maggie, say hi to Deb. She's like, I'm so tired and I've been sleep. Come say hi. What are you doing? Can you come say hi? Come on. Come on, Maggie, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, she's so good. Now she won't do it anymore. She's getting slightly less naughty. So now she won't. Also, when she's hungry, she comes right on up to my lap. But yeah, there she is. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Oh, yes. I love this one. I went all out on it. Yes. I can't wait. <laughs> um, So, so cute. <laughs> this is outstanding. I bet you that's for Maggie. <laughs> I'm assuming that's not for me. <laughs> oh, you guys are so fun. Well, is there any other questions before I wrap up um, for today? So just to recap, all the replays are going to be in the classroom for you. All the links to the daily lives are in the classroom and in your emails that you get every day. The emails are being sent out at 745 and I'm releasing them. I'm actually releasing them early, probably like 730 because I have to get my kids to school and that's right at seven. It's a little crazy in the morning, so I can turn those on earlier um, today. Well, you can do whatever hair colors you like. There's no rules. So if you can do, I usually just pick two, I say two as I hold up three fingers, two colors. <laughs> I usually pick, I usually pick out two colors and I doink my paintbrush in one and then the other and then I swish. I don't mix them on, on anywhere, but however it comes out on my substrate. And I like to do tones. So I'll be like two tones of yellow or two tones of brown or, and they're usually close to each other. Like I wouldn't have like a bright yellow and a dark brown. I would not put together. I think, think of it as like shades of skin tone. You wouldn't do like a peach on a super dark brown. You would do like them, right? You have like peach and then dark peach or light flesh and flesh or like honey brown and chocolate like two tones that are near to each other i would do hair the same way so i would that i did like black and brown because they're close like dark brown and black or um you know like brown and then brown with a little bit of yellow mixed in so that's what i would do but you can do any color you can do blue hair you can do green hair don't limit yourself i saw a couple people were already using the final as their inspiration they're already practicing and one of my blue hair she was rocking that blue hair so um yeah super simple two colors right next to each other just two shades of brown two shades of of like a yellow ochre for blonde it's very simple um, oh, you guys are so cute. Oh, the hashtag is Art Deco Divas. Um, quick question about pit pens. The alternatives were acrylic paint. Yes, that's an excellent question. Um, the ideal are the pit pens, and the pit pens are one of a kind. <laughs> they are one of a kind in that the ink inside is a pigmented India ink. That is correct. And the Posca pens are acrylic ink, which you are correct in saying that they are not the same, and they are not. However, so many people can't get a hold of the pit pens. So in a pinch, you can use Posca pens as as an equivalent. And they're an equivalent for two reasons. One, they are thinned to the correct consistency. So they are applied in the exactly the same way that I'm using the pit pen. So you can still follow along. That's why they're okay. And number two, the second reason that they're an okay alternative is that they're permanent. So they go on wet, you smudge them and blend them with your finger real quick and then they dry. So they work exactly the same way, but you are definitely correct. They are not identically the same inside, but they will be fine enough for this project. So 
Yes. Yes. And not quite perfect, but close enough. And it's the only alternative that there really is. Um, yeah, you could, yes, you can do anything. Mod Podge and paint are friends, so you're fine. Um, could you sky so what care care we la 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 la. <laughs> yeah, you know what my cheat is for choosing colors, especially if you do like um, loud paint colors, is I look around in my environment. Uh, I look at like my scrapbooking heap paper. I could look at, it could be like a colorful rug in my house. It could be like curtains. You could be at the store and looking at napkins, um, shower curtains, wallpaper, blankets, um, anything that has the color that's in your background. You no, know, if it's anything is commercially produced is going to match. And you can pick colors based on what your commercially chosen uh substrate or fabric or whatever it is so that's what i that's my biggest like cheat when it comes to my mixed media projects perfect example <clears throat> perfect example um the this is scrapbooking paper is uh like a yellow ochre a red and a turquoise so guess what colors i used on my canvas <laughs> yellow ochre red and turquoise simple so choose the colors that are already in your background um, and repeat them in your main subject say or vice versa if you have colors in your main subject if I had started with a blue cat <laughs> and blue eyes and red then I would pick scrapbooking paper that had the same colors in it. So when you repeat your colors over and over, your piece ties together. So, but that's my cheat for all my mixed media projects is I always pick out my papers first. And also a big, another cheat is pick papers from the same pad because those will always go together. Um, so, ah, let me fall off my chair. I've actually been in a meeting before and I fell off my chair. <laughs> So for its same thing, this was five different, this by the way is Mixed Media Society October lesson. Um, I chose five different pieces of steampunk scrapbooking paper, but because they were all from the same pad, they all went exactly together. And then as you notice, I don't deviate from that color scheme. So the paper is like sepia, black, brown, and this light color. So. As you can see, the only place that there's any color, her eyes, which is super cool because it's her eyes. But again, if you just repeat the main colors on your uh, paper, you are guaranteed color matching success. You're welcome. <laughs> um, so, yes. Um, I make sure I didn't. Um, all right, instructions on, in your mixed media club. Yes. They are. Yes. They certainly are. Yep. The Mixed Media Society is where all my, all my lessons are. All my good painty mixed media lessons are all in there. And there's 27 more hamburger projects in the Mixed Media Society. I, I love it. It works so well. And you can use it for so, like anything that I've done, animal, like you saw animals in her hair. That These are both mixed, those are both hamburger projects where it's uh, the same layering system, but you can do quotes, you can do, you know, inanimate objects, you can do landscapes, you can do animals, you can do whatever you want using those same layer. That's why it's so awesome and it works so well. Um, didn't you do a lesser two on brown paper bags? Well, brown paper bag, um, I do, I don't. If I have any in there, I think I did one on YouTube. Brown paper bags are just toned, like toned paper, not this toned paper, but um, like my favorite toned paper journal. Like it literally feels like a paper bag, just chopped up into perfect squares. It's awesome for arting on. <clears throat> um, so there is one. She's a big fashion chick on brown paper bag in my in a big art journal. And yeah, I'm looking forward to that steampunk too. I'm going to do another one. I already know what I'm going to do and I'm super excited about it. Deb, Deb, I'm so glad you're here. I haven't seen you for ages. I hope you're good. And Trisha's swooping in. Hi, hi, hi yourself, girlfriend. 
Lots of fun students are here hanging out with us. I'm so glad you guys are coming. It's so fun. Um, um, what if we don't have pit pens or Posca pens? I put um, a link to an alternative that's very inexpensive in the classroom yesterday. Day is it today? Friday. I did it Friday because I was live on Friday and we talked about this. So if you look in the classroom, uh, in the supplies for days five and six, you'll see um, another alternative there. You can also stop after day four if you want to just observe what happens on day five and six. Because what happens on day one through four, we're, we're completing our hot dog. And we, we you can kind of be done if you want to. Um, the last couple layers are optional. Um, they're my personal favorite layers. <laughs> so I wouldn't miss them. I would at least watch them even if you don't have them because it's super cool kind of just the, what, what you can do with just the last minute things. Things, you know what I mean? Last minute little layers um, are, are pretty are pretty awesome. They're my favorite. So I think you, if you don't have them immediately or can't get them in time, you also have lifetime access to these lessons. So if you can't get them for, to, for a month, you can still go back in a month and go, go and watch and finish it up. So hopefully that helps. Dawn Alliance here. Hi, friends. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> Pigma by Sokira. Um, I want to say that those are water soluble. And I, so I don't think that they will. Let me look. Um, let me just look them up really quickly. I, I, I feel like they're, are they brush pens? If they're brush pens, then they are, won't work. Oh, maybe they will. Um, they, although they, do they come in skin colors? You need them in, oh, they come in a ton of colors. I don't know. I've never tried them before. Hold on. I'm looking up to see. They looks like they have. Oh, they have a ton. Um, I would re. Are they? Hold on. I ha I haven't tried them, so I don't know. I'm not going to tell you yes if I don't know. Ah, it looks like they have a whole mess of them here. First, you want them in skin colors. So if they have skin colors. That's the first question. And the second question is they need to be have they need to be not water soluble. And I'm on my um, most fine liners are water soluble. So you'll need to read. And if you have them the way you just test them. So put them on a piece of watercolor paper and run a wet brush over them and see if they bleed. So if they bleed, they won't work. And if they are permanent and you have skin colors, then they will. I hope that that makes sense. Um, yes, that is correct. They are only used for shading. Um, okay. Diane grabbed some alternatives. Awesome. 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 Oh my gosh. Deb, there is a steampunk dude coming. Yes. And he's magnificent. Just you wait. Just you wait. Um, Awesome. Yeah, Katie was just saying, be careful with glossy because it'll stick if you're in an art journal. That is that is definitely true. But I do use a I do have a good spray sealer that you can spray over it that will knock that off in case you anyone is working in an art journal. Um, I, I have links to my favorite spray. And if you coat anything with that spray, it'll it cuts out the sticky. So you'll be OK. All right. All right, guys. I could hang out with you guys forever. This is awesome. Um, can I use an old canvas painted with acrylic paint as my plate? It's very texture. Yeah, you can totally do that. I work on old canvases all the time. You sure can. If it's too textured in a bad way that you don't like, you can just feel free to sand it down a little bit. And then it, the collage is completely up to you. If you want to have collage on it, then go for it. And if you don't want to have collage on it and it's already really textured, that's fine. You can also layer collage, like scrapbook paper does not tend to get wrinkly or bubbly. It's That's why I use it so much. It's very straightforward. And that can even help like smooth out some of your texture too. That might not be your favorite background. Um, 
Oh no, Wendy. I'm so sorry. It wasn't posted right in the group. Oh no. Oh, thank you. So the links are also in the classroom and they're also in your emails in the morning that you get Wendy. Okay. So they're in a couple place. Um, and I, you know what I schedule, I wonder if you didn't have, I scheduled like four for this week ahead of time. So I wonder if maybe you weren't in like clicking on the, one of the future ones that hadn't started yet. Thank you, Tara, for helping Wendy out. Um, can you use a ceramic plate as a plate and sand and gesso it? Um, I don't see why not. I don't see why not. You can also collage on it. Um, I would, if it's glossy though, you'll probably, yeah, you'll definitely need to sand it if it's, if it's, um, the class link didn't work. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Wendy. I don't know what happened. I haven't had anybody reach out that they couldn't get in. I'm really sorry. I'll have to go investigate and see what went wrong. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here now. Are you using pit pens? Yes. Yep. I sure am. Um, I sure am. Yes. I'm sorry, guys. The replays will be in the classroom. I'm sorry. I don't know what what didn't what wasn't worked. I know the way the replays will all be available. And day one is always a little bit of a shit show. Sometimes it takes. There's a lot of moving parts, and there's so many people. So I'm sorry. Nothing happened. We didn't talk about anything. Don't worry. We wouldn't, we wouldn't move on without you. Oh, she's so sad. I'm sorry, Wendy. Um, okay. Does anyone have questions? Any more questions? You got it from the classroom link. It took me a second though. <clears throat> Thank you, Debbie. I hope you have a sparkly day as well. <laughs> yes. Yeah, there's people, Annette, from all around the world. My poor Aussies can never get here. I interviewed Karen Richardson on yesterday, and she was like, we are 13 hours apart. So the only I had, so I we had our meeting at 8 a.m. for me, and it was 10 p.m. for her. So I was like, she they can never be here ever. And it broke my heart. So third, I think later in the week, um, because I already scheduled the first four days, like Friday and Saturday, I think I'm going to do an early one so that my Australians can come and hang out as well. All right. Um, all right. All right, my friends. Well, Wendy, you know how to get here now. So hopefully tomorrow you'll be you'll be good to go. Um, and check, you should be able to click right from the from the email too in the morning. And if nobody's getting my email, please reach out and let me know so I can make sure you're in my system correctly so you're getting those morning emails as well. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I, there's no way that I'm going to be able to please everyone with people watching from every single time zone around the globe. It's going to be impossible. But I'll be here for the next three days at this time. Thank you, Deb. <laughs> you're welcome well you guys thank you for hanging out with me um if you have any other questions that i didn't get to today you can feel free to leave them in the classroom um you can leave them right there in the classroom or you can always email me karen at awesomeartschool.com um i'm going the next three days i'm gonna be here at noon again eastern time Thank you guys. Thank you so much. Yeah. So tomorrow we have the drawing lesson. Even if you don't think you can draw, I highly encourage you to just do the lesson anyways, because you might surprise yourself. You have nothing to lose. You have nothing else going on me because I hopefully you reserved a little time for yourself for arting in the morning anyways. So I really highly encourage you to pick up a pencil, even if you've never drawn before and just, just follow along. Just humor yourself. Just give it a go. You might just be super surprised at what you can do. I'm just, I'm just saying. All right, guys. All right, you take care, and I will see you the same time, same place tomorrow. Have an awesome day.